Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out the Logitech Brio 300 versus the 500 to see which one is worth getting. Getting straight into it, here we have the Logitech Brio 300 plugged in. We got the video and the microphone running. As you can tell, it's not going to be as good as a DSLR camera, which I'm using the Sony a7. The quality is going to be at 1080p max resolution, and it's going to be running maximum at 30 FPS, or at least that's what it says on the Logitech website, because this to me kind of feels like 15 FPS, and I couldn't see any settings in the software to make it 30. And now let's jump over to the Brio 500. And now we have the Brio 500 plugged in, and you can tell right away the lighting looks crispier using the right light for technology and also you can see that it has a wider field of view you can see my microphone and some of the corners in my room here and in the software you can adjust this if it's a little too wide for you this is going to be a 90 degree viewing angle if I click on 78 you can see it just popped in um, and we can go even closer this is 65 and this is going to be uh, kind of feel like more like the 300. So that's one of the cool things about this camera that the 300 doesn't have is you can adjust the field of views. And what else you can do with this camera that the Logitech Brio 300 can't do is you can have right sight. And right sight, what that does is if I enable it here, you can see that the camera starts to follow me around and even if I'm zoomed in like this, it's always gonna be targeted on my face and it's always gonna be keeping me in the shot regardless of uh, where I'm standing. As long as I'm not too far off to the right or left, it's gonna keep up with me. However, this can be a little distracting in meetings if you're on the close setting. I can set it to further, which if I click save, you can see it's gonna zoom out. And you can keep it like this where it follows you around. It's not always gonna keep your face in the center because if you move a little bit in the meeting, the camera is always gonna be following you around and I think that can be distracting. So this is a cool feature that the Brio 500 has that the 300 does not. So now we're back on our main DSLR camera and that's kind of the difference between two webcams that are around the $100 to $70 range versus a DSLR camera. Of course, these webcams, they're gonna be good for things like meetings and calls, but for production level stuff, whether you're like a streamer or maybe you're actually producing content for YouTube, I would definitely not recommend either of those Logitech cameras for that. Both lenses are gonna have privacy shutters, so you can have that full privacy, and then they're also both gonna be able to connect via USB-C. There's not gonna be a USB-A option, so be mindful of that and uh, with your connection ports that you have available on your computer. And regarding the software for both webcams, they are gonna be using the Logi Tune software, which can be downloaded from their website and it's gonna be compatible on Windows, Mac, Linux, the whole shebang. And both tests that I did were set on full auto mode. I didn't tweak any settings, this is just out of the box. And the quality of the Logitech Brio 500 looked much better than the 300. It felt like the 300 was over exposed exposed and bright, but the Logitech Brio 500 seemed to have much more clearer uh, visual quality. It didn't feel like it was over brightened. So definitely a much better option to go with the 500. In terms of the microphone audio quality, both of them weren't really like amazing or anything like that, but they're definitely doable for meetings and calls. If you just need a webcam that's like, get your point across, you're not doing any production level stuff, I think both of the mics are gonna be okay here. In the software, obviously the Logi 500 has more features, mainly the moving around the camera and the field of view adjustment. That's mainly the leg up it has over the 300. But the uh, overall, they're very similar in the software in terms of like the lighting adjustments you can do, the filters, the resolution. So here's the verdict. If you want something that's higher quality and you're gonna look good in meetings, you're gonna sound okay, the lighting is not gonna feel whack then go for the Brio 500. It's gonna come in at $130. But if you're on a budget and you really don't care what your uh, visual quality looks like or the microphone or the light, then just go with the 300. But it doesn't seem like you're gonna pay much more, 50 bucks, and you're gonna get something that's a lot more future-proof. This camera is gonna be okay going in for like the next five years or so, I'm guessing. And then when webcam technology gets better, then you can upgrade from the 500 to something else. So if you're interested in any of these cameras, links are gonna be down below. And if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.